Moose antlers are a thing of wonder for most hunters. They're interesting to look at, and on a mature bull, they're absolutely gargantuan. One of the interesting things about moose antlers is that they vary greatly in width, height, tine count, palm width, and overall configuration. This makes them very hard to judge in the field, even for experienced guides. Let's take a look at some general principles to keep in mind when you're trying to figure out whether the bull you're looking at is legal or not. Now, we're not going to go into how to judge antler spread in this video because we're going to cover that in great detail later on in this book. But what we want to do here is look at some general antler characteristics and especially some characteristics that will help you decide whether you're looking at a large, mature bull. We're going to do that in this video. But keep these antler characteristics in mind as you look at moose in the field. Let's start with some basics about moose antlers. They come in all shapes and sizes, but there are some general things that are true of all of them. Let's identify all of the various parts because we're going to be using these terms throughout, and you're going to need to know them. They're used in the hunting regulations, and you need to know this terminology. The first area we're going to look at is the main palm area. Antler palms vary greatly in width and length. Now, some will tell you that you can ac accurately judge antler width by estimating the palm width. But on Alaska Yukon moose, this is a very unreliable method for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's really hard to judge the width of the palm down to the inch when the animal is out there walking around in front of you. It's almost impossible for most hunters to do that. The other problem is that many moose in Alaska, the Alaska Yukon moose, which you're going to find in Alaska, uh, the palms may be narrow, wide, short, or tall relative to the overall width. I've seen many mature moose with very narrow palms and really long points. On the other end of the scale, I've seen some bulls with really wide points and almost no points. So you can't go by palm width as an estimate of antler spread. Now these are the palm points or palm tines as you hear them called sometimes. They project off the main palms and sometimes they're used to determine the overall width of the antlers if they stick way out past the main palms. Speaking of points, this antler has five points on the right antler and six on the left. Now, when we talk about right and left, we're talking about the moose's right and left, not yours when you're looking at the picture. By the way, most moose are left antlered, meaning that the left antler is larger than the right. That's a general characteristic you're going to see on most bull moose in Alaska. Now, what about these two points? Why didn't we count them? Well, according to the Alaska Department of Fish and Game, an antler point must be longer than it is wide at the base and at least an inch long to be counted as a point. These two points are very shallow and they don't meet the requirement. And by the way, while we're talking about palm points, the palm points have nothing to do with the legal requirement for a moose. We don't have a minimum palm point requirement. But as I said earlier, those palm points can help determine the overall spread if they're sticking out past the main palm like they are in this case and like they do most of the time. Okay, we talked about the palm points, but what about these two areas? How come we didn't count the points down here? These are the brow palms. They're defined by deep bays that separate them from the main palms. In most cases, these bays are readily visible on a live moose in the field once you know where to look. But some bulls lack this bay, and the antlers are essentially one palm all the way from the brow area clear to the main palm. It's just a big basket of tines. On bulls like that, it's difficult or impossible to identify the separation between the main palm and the brow palm until you have the animal on the ground, and sometimes not even then. Well, why is it so important to know where the brow palm begins anyway? Before we can answer that, we need to look at one more thing. These are the brow points or tines, as they're referred to in the regulations. And unlike the palm points, they project off of the brow palm. In this illustration, this set of antlers has one brow tine on the right side and two on the left. In most areas of Alaska, this bull would be illegal unless he met the 50-inch antler spread requirement. I can tell you just looking at this set of antlers, there's no way he's going to make 50 inches. That's because in most of Alaska, a legal bull has to have at least four brow tines on at least one side or have a 50-inch antler spread to be legal. And in Alaska, we don't count all of the brow tines together from both sides. We go by the western count, which is the number of tines on one side only, whichever side has the most points. That means that a legal bull could have four tines on one side and only two on the other. Now what about this area? How come we didn't count it with the rest of the brow tines? Remember the definition of a tine? 
It has to be longer than it is wide at the base and at least an inch long. There are two projections on this palmated area of the brow palm, but it, neither one of them meets the definition of a point. These kind of anomalies are very common on moose antlers, especially on larger bulls. Our final antler characteristic are the beams. These are the thick stalks that support the antler on each side. There are no legal considerations regarding the beams, but their shape together with the angle of the main palms is used to help determine antler size. We're going to come back to that in a minute. Now earlier I mentioned that in most of Alaska, a bull moose has to meet one of three criteria in order to be legal. The first is whether it has spike or forked antlers. Now a spike fork bull is a, is a great uh, meat animal for hunters looking for a meat bull, and we're going to look at an example of one in a minute. The second requirement is that the bull must have at least four brow tines on one side. Some areas three, but most of the state it's four brow tines on at least one side. That's exactly why it's important that you define where those bays are that separate the brow palm from the main palm. The brow tines must be on the brow palm. Hunters commonly mistake an adjacent palm point for a brow tine and end up in trouble. That's especially true with bulls that have an isolated point that's just past the brow area. That's very common. You'll have a bull with a long tine between the brow uh, palm and the main palm, and sometimes hunters will include that single point with the brow area, and it doesn't belong there at all. It's actually part of the main palm, so you have to be really careful. The third criteria is if the bull has a 50-inch antler spread. We're going to examine that in detail later on in this chapter because there's a very specific way antler spread has to be measured. And we're not going to do it on this video. We'll see it in just a few minutes in the, later on in the book. Okay, so we know a bull has to meet at least one of three criteria to be legal. It's pretty easy to tell if the bull has spikes or forks. And once you figure out the bay separating the main palm from the brow palm, counting brow tines is pretty simple too. But what do you do about those bulls that don't exhibit the bay or the ones that don't have enough brow tines to meet the legal minimum? After all, there are a lot of 60 and 70 inch bulls wandering around Alaska with only two tines on each side. The answer to that is obvious. You have to go by antler spread. As I've said, we're going to go into that in detail later on. But while we're talking about antler configuration, we should discuss what happens to moose antlers as they grow. This is going to give you some things to consider when you're judging your moose on the hoof. In most cases, as a bull moose matures, his main palms grow straight up from the beams at close to a 90 degree angle. This is a general rule of thumb that's not always true, but mostly true. Generally speaking, if a bull's palms go straight up at a 90 degree angle to the beams, he's probably a younger bull. But as a bull matures, his beams get thicker, the palms get heavier, and as the antlers develop while they're still soft during the early summer when they're in the velvet, the weight of the palms can cause the tops of the palms to splay out at the top and you lose that 90 degree angle off the beams. The inside of the top of the palms is wider than the inside bottom edges. Now in a younger bull, the beams project straight out from the skull plate. But for many older bulls with heavier antlers, the weight of the antlers causes the beams to bend downward into a slight curve when they're in their growth cycle in early summer. Note that I said this happens sometimes, not always, but you can use it to help determine how old the bull is and how large his antlers are. If, he's, if his tops are splayed out and the main beams are curved, you're probably looking at an older, mature bull. Okay, let's look at some moose and see, what we've, uh, see if we can put what we've learned into practice. This is a young spike fork. He meets the legal requirements for a forked horn bull and would be legal in a spike fork 50-inch area. By the way, the reason you're allowed to harvest a spike or a fork is because genetic studies in Alaska have shown that yearling bulls that produce spikes or forks will nearly always have smaller antlers for the rest of their life compared to bulls that produce paddles in their first year. The Alaska Department of Fish and Game is attempting in sort of a small way to cull out bulls with the genetics to produce smaller antlers. Spike fork bulls are fun to hunt and the meat's excellent. They've never been hunted before. They usually have no idea what's going on. If you're a meat hunter, it's hard to beat a young bull like this one. This bull is either a yearling or a two-year-old. He has two brow tines on the left antler and two palm points, so he would be illegal in a spike fork 50 area. Bulls like this 
sometimes trip up hunters who are a little bit too trigger happy because they see the two palm points and they either forget to look for the brow points or they just don't see them. Always look your bull over carefully before you pull the trigger. This bull looks nothing like the last one that we saw. Remember when I mentioned that some bulls don't display the deep bay between the brow palm and the main palm? This shed antler is a great example of that. Of course, this is from a bull that doesn't meet any of the minimum standards, but the point is that some bulls don't have that bay that allows you to do an accurate brow tine count. Some of these bulls can be quite large, well past the 50 inch minimum. And on those bulls, you're gonna to have to go with the antler spread. Here's a four tine bull that doesn't meet the 50 inch minimum. This bull is legal because he has four brow tines on the right antler, but his antlers are cupped inward, and without those four tines, we would not have been able to legally take this bull. And this brings up another point about antler configuration. Some antler palms are folded or cupped inward. This can severely compromise the spread. I've seen several bulls over the years that if it were not for this factor, they would have measured in the high 60 inch class, but they didn't even make 50. Cupped or folded antlers can get you in trouble because sometimes they have a lot of mass, but they don't meet the minimum spread. This bull meets the minimum brow tine count with four brow tines on each antler, but without the brow tine count, he would be very hard to judge on antler spread alone. The palms are thin, indicating a younger bull, and they're somewhat cupped, which robs him of the antler spread needed to make a solid 50 inches. The palms on this bull are thin, which indicates a younger bull not yet at his prime. It's hard to tell from this angle, but these antlers measured 60 inches. This was a younger bull without the antler mass to start splaying the palms outward or bending the beams downward. He only has three brow tines on the left antler and two on the right, so he didn't meet the brow tine minimum and was harvested on the basis of antler spread alone. This is an older, mature bull that easily meets the four brow tine minimum on the and the 50 inch antler spread requirement. Notice how his palms lay out flatter than some of the other bulls we've seen. That'll get, get you a lot more spread on a bull if the antlers lay out flat like that. He also has some palm points that stick out to the side quite a bit past the palm. Bulls like this easily meet the 50 inch requirement at a younger age than bulls with cupped antlers. The palms are thicker, as are the brow tines, which is another indicator that this bull is a mature bull that's well into his prime. Bulls like this don't require a second look before pulling the trigger, but notice that he only has two brow tines on each side. Brow tine count is not an indicator of the maturity of the bull, so it pays to learn how to judge antler spread. This bull's antlers required a second look because both palms were folded in, at robbing him of the spread that he should have had. But once we saw the four brow tines on each side, we didn't hesitate at all. This is the same bull's antlers. Notice how the top of the palms are just starting to spray, splay outward and the beams are bent downward. Both of these factors usually mean you're looking at a larger bull. And by the way, this set of antlers measured 59 and a half by that wide flyer out on the uh, right antler. This bull has four brow tines on the right antler, but the real indicator is the splayed palms and the bent beams. This bull is in the mid to high 60s. Bulls approaching very large sizes often develop freakish antler points. In this case, the brow tines are almost totally palmated and do not meet the four tine requirement. But the splayed palms, bent beams, and mostly flat palms are clear indicators that this is a record class bull. This is another unusually large bull with 10 brow tines on the left and seven on the right side. The brow palms are nearly as large as the main palms. The palms are splayed at the top and the beams have a very obvious sag on each side. This bull ranked number six in the Boone and Crockett record book the year he was taken. Okay, we've looked at moose antler characteristics that will help you judge legal bulls in the field. Be sure to review this video as often as you can and look at as many photos of other bulls as you can until you become proficient in judging legal and trophy class bulls. 